Is China getting closer to setting up a spy base in America's backyard? The White House is responding. That's after news broke that Cuba allegedly agreed to host a Chinese spy base just 100 miles from Florida. If realized, Beijing could tap the communications of many U.S. military bases and American ship traffic. What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. This program is brought to you by Preserve Gold the number one precious metals IRA provider. Call 855-962-3322. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The White House responding to an alleged new threat from China. That's after news broke that Cuba allegedly agreed to host a Chinese spy base just a hundred miles from Florida. NTD's Arian Pazdar has the latest. The Wall Street Journal on Thursday reported that China is building an outpost in Cuba. That's according to U.S. officials who say China will use the location to spy on the southeastern United States. The two communist countries reportedly came to an agreement after China agreed to pay cash-stripped Cuba several billion dollars. Have they introduced missiles into Cuba? The Chinese have been very typical about openly arming their facilities, whether it's the South China Seas, whether it's their fortress in Djibouti. John Mills is a retired army colonel and author of the book The Nation Will Follow. He says China most likely already has such outposts in Cuba and the Bahamas and that the U.S. should react. With China expanding in, in this area close to the U.S. mainland, how could the U.S. push back to prevent this from happening? Well, first of all, we, let's, let's put an ambassador in the Bahamas, encourage the Bahamas to throw out China. That would be a good pushback. That's not Cuba, but it's right next to Cuba, and it would send a message. We also should demonstrably and visibly rearm southern Florida. He says this reported base reminds him of the Cold War, when the Soviet Union used Cuba to store missiles. According to Mills, southern Florida was heavily armed during that period of time. But now? We don't have any aircraft interceptors. We don't have any naval ships. Obviously, we don't really care. That's the message. Mills added that the U.S. should also expand influence in Panama because down there. The Chinese have a much stronger presence. And to get to Cuba, they got to go through the Panama Canal. However, the Pentagon on Thursday said it's not aware of any Chinese base in this region. That that is not accurate, uh, that, that we are not aware of China and Cuba uh, developing any type of spy station. Separately, I would say that the relationship that those two countries share is something that we continuously monitor. The State Department told NTD it can't confirm China's plans. Ariane Pastar, NTD News. White House spokesperson John Kirby saying the report is not accurate, though he did not specify what was incorrect about it. If a Chinese eavesdropping facility comes to fruition in Cuba, that means Beijing could tap electronic communications in the southeastern U.S., home to a number of military bases. The Chinese Communist Party is taking its nationalist education to a new level. Videos from Chinese social media offer a glimpse of just how far Beijing's brainwashing campaign has gone, appearing to teach students to hate Americans and even how to fight them. Here's what's happening. In this video, a Chinese schoolboy says the countries he hates the most are the United States and Japan. When asked what he wants to do when he grows up, he blurts out a stunning reply to kill the Japanese and Americans. In a Twitter commentary, U.S. war correspondent Michael Yan compared the Chinese regime's hate training to that of al-Qaeda. For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has been pushing ideological education in schools. At its core, propagation of party loyalty and nationalist pride. Current leader Xi Jinping deepened the party's grip on young minds, teaching students to get ready for war and to fight Beijing's enemies. In this recent video, kindergartners are learning how to impale scarecrows 
clad in Japanese uniforms with bayonets. Another clip shows school children doing mock military training in China's southern Guangxi province. The young boys and girls crawled through the mud and over obstacles like real soldiers, some even with a knife in their mouths. The caption reads, children must be strong to defend our country. Warming ties between China and Saudi Arabia, traditionally a U.S. ally in the Middle East. There, Washington is battling for influence with Beijing. The scale seemingly tipping in China's favor. Beijing is opening a Confucius Institute in Saudi Arabia. China touts them as cultural and language centers. But critics say these institutes spread communist influence and bring Chinese state censorship into the classroom. The U.S. used to host many Confucius Institutes on campuses, but dozens have been shuttered due to controversies over their communist influence. Back to the shifting relations in the Middle East, America's top diplomat Anthony Blinken is there this week, visiting Saudi's crown prince. That's in hopes of fixing Washington's plunging relations with the country. The United States very much appreciates the leadership. Saudi Arabia has historically been a U.S. ally. The country holds significant influence on the world stage, partly because it's the world's largest crude oil exporter. But Washington's relations with Saudi took a plunge following President Biden's hardline stance. While Biden was a candidate, he vowed to make Saudis, quote, the pariah that they are. That's over the killing of a Saudi journalist. Beijing, in the meantime, has not been sitting idle. The Chinese regime helped Saudi Arabia and Iran resume their diplomatic relations. That's a big deal because the two are known as mortal enemies and had cut their ties for seven years. After the peace deal, Iran reopened its embassy in Saudi Arabia. Days before Blinken's visit, Iran said it's planning to form a naval alliance with Saudi and other Gulf states. As Americans grapple with soaring food prices, Beijing might be driving the trend. The country is now stocking up on U.S. grains. Here are the details. U.S. supermarket prices have shot up at their fastest rate in decades, rising by 11 percent annually from 2021 to 2022. The hike driven by a looming food crisis. According to a poll conducted by biotech company Bayer, over 70 percent of Americans say they're seeing more empty shelves in grocery stores now than last year. Impacted by the shortage are staples like corn and bread. And at the global level, rice production saw its largest drop in 20 years. Behind the deficits, Russia's war in Ukraine. But analysts pinpoint another driver, too, China, home to less than one-fifth of the world's population. China hoards more than half of the planet's grain reserves, including corn, rice, and wheat. That was an estimate from the U.S. Department of Agriculture last year. While producing its own food, China imports more agricultural products than any other country. Over the past two decades, the country's food self-sufficiency rate has dropped by almost 30 percent. Meanwhile, as Moscow seeks to limit grain exports from Ukraine, Beijing has become the biggest beneficiary. Almost a quarter of Ukraine's total exports have flowed to China, making it the biggest recipient of all. Why is Beijing obsessed with stockpiling? Analysts say the regime is wary of food insecurity, which could threaten its reign. Half a century ago, China recorded the largest famine in human history as a result of former Communist Party head Mao Zedong's radical agriculture policies. The crisis led to 30 million deaths and a decade-long socio-political upheaval known as the Cultural Revolution. The country saw similar food shortages during its three years of COVID-19 lockdowns. U.S. officials have long said Beijing may have access to TikTok users' personal information, but that was more of a speculation until now. A newly obtained sample of the app's code shows China-based engineers had worked on it, and an ex-TikTok employee testified that Beijing has viewed user data for political purposes. Let's take a closer look. TikTok has been downplaying ties with its Chinese owner ByteDance, especially amid Western bans of the video-sharing app. But a code sample recently seen by the Australia's Financial Review may defeat that effort. The sample appears to control broadcasting and moderation of live streaming. It shows at least a dozen usernames with email addresses linked to ByteDance. Sources that the Financial Review did not disclose confirm that many of these engineers worked in mainland China. James Patterson is Australia's Shadow Minister for Home Affairs and Cybersecurity. 
He said the code sample shows that engineers working on it in China can access user data and are captured by the intelligence and security laws of the Chinese Communist Party. Under its national intelligence law, Beijing can force all entities and citizens to cooperate with so-called national intelligence efforts. Patterson warned that the CCP can also compel TikTok staff to suppress or elevate pro-Beijing content or sow division within Western democracies. In July 2022, TikTok Australia admitted that its employees in China could access Australian user data. Over two dozen U.S. states have banned the video sharing app on government devices. Last month, Montana passed a new law further banning its use on personal devices. TikTok's ties to Beijing also revealed in a court filing earlier this week. A former TikTok employee has detailed specific claims that Beijing accessed user data for political means, saying officials gained backdoor access to TikTok to track and identify pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong in 2018. A new push to counter Beijing's economic coercion. The European Union agreeing to come up with an economic weapon to protect member countries if one of them gets hit by economic punishment from China. The decision follows an incident last year when Beijing cut trade from Lithuania by 80 percent. The move was viewed as retaliation after Lithuania allowed Taiwan to open a de facto embassy in its capital. The Chinese communist regime sees Taiwan as part of its territory, despite never having ruled it, and staunchly opposes any formal relations between the island and foreign countries. Back to the new economic weapon, the EU is considering what does it involve? It would allow the EU to apply tariffs and restrict investments into countries engaged in economic coercion. But it's considered a last-ditch effort to be used only if all else fails. The economic weapon is expected to take effect this year, after the EU parliament and member nations approve the measure. Next, news from Taiwan. The island's defense system activated at 5 a.m. local time Wednesday after detecting 37 Chinese warplanes crossing into its air defense zone. Here are the details. Taiwan's defense ministry said the warplanes included J-11 and J-16 fighters and nuclear-capable H-6 bombers. They entered from the southwestern corner of Taiwan's air defense identification zone, an area the military uses to identify and respond to any threats. Beyond sending its air and naval forces to keep an eye on Beijing's jets, Taipei also activated its land-based missile systems. China has been actively sending military aircraft toward Taiwan. But the latest round falls short of the largest so-called patrol. In April, Beijing sent up to 45 warplanes to simulate a blockade around Taiwan. It happened during U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's meeting with Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen. During a security summit in Singapore last Sunday, the Chinese defense minister said other countries should, quote, mind their own business when he was questioned about China's frequent military moves. Out of jail and back in the lab. That's what's happening with one of the world's most controversial scientists after he drew ire from the medical community and the globe. He Jinghui is a Chinese scientist. Five years ago, he created the world's first gene-edited babies, twin girls named Lulu and Nana. Accused of illegal medical practices, he was taken into custody and jailed for three years. That's over fears surrounding the ethics of designer babies and the unknown surrounding its long-term safety. But now he's getting back to work. In an interview, he explained that's because over 2,000 patients had reached out to him for help. All of them suffer from a genetic disease called DMD, which causes progressive and severe muscle weakness. Average life expectancy for those with the condition ranges from 20 to 30 years. There is no cure, but He Jianghui is trying to change that. He's banned from researching reproductive technology and limited on studies linked to human genes. But inside a new lab in Beijing, he's working on a cure for DMD. He reportedly has five staff members and funding from U.S.-based donors. His return is raising concerns among experts. Some suggest his motivations could be linked to the Chinese Communist Party, its ambitions in biotechnology development and the global race for dominance. The scientist says he gets no funding from Beijing, but has contact only to ensure the law is being followed. In a few months, he hopes to move to animal studies on mice and to human clinical trials by 2025. 
a major feat given the pharmaceutical industry has been searching for a cure for years. Lastly, a freshly served duck neck with eyes and a pointy nose. A university student in China found what appears to be a rodent head in his cafeteria meal. Local authorities inspected the canteen only to conclude that the meat in question was a duck neck. NTD Sam Wong has the story. Point to a deer, call it a horse. That's a Chinese phrase often used to describe intentional deception. But now, a modified version of the term, point to a rat, call it a duck, is trending on the internet. On June 1st, a college student in China's Yangtze province posted a viral clip, revealing unsettling details about a furry object found in a rice dish served by the school's cafeteria. In the video, the student picks up the item with his chopstick, and lo and behold, there goes his teeth, nose, and whiskers. The person then brought it over to the catering staff, but they responded that it's just a duck neck. Duck neck is a popular dish in China, but according to social media users, what landed in the student's plate looked nothing like it. Two days later, the university came forward saying that the object was in fact a duck neck and reminded the student not to discuss the matter online. The local food regulatory department also jumped in, investigating for days but ending up with same answer. But a Chinese rodent expert said it was very likely a mouse's head just by looking at the picture. The student himself came out and apologized for posting the clip, but Chinese netizens don't seem to be buying it. Many are saying that regulatory authorities and the school failed to hold up food safety standards. Mind you, if you're about to ask, what kind of duck neck has his mouth wide open? We'll leave that for viewers to decide. Sam Wong, NTD News. That's over today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. How is the artificial intelligence race shaping up between the U.S. and China? And how different are their approaches? Like in the military, where the U.S. has laws to ensure AI doesn't make a kill, but China doesn't. We hear from Andrew Thornbrook, national security correspondent at the Epoch Times, for insight. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.